What's up, YouTube? So, in this video, I'm going to be going over my thoughts on um, week one of the XFL. And, uh, yeah, overall, I think it was a pretty positive experience. Um, I'm not sure how much film I'm really going to be doing on the XFL right now. Um, obviously I'm not doing that for this video. The only reason I'm kind of hesitant to do it is because I kind of want to wait and see what the XFL is going to be like as far as using their content. And, uh, I also don't really have a way of finding film for the XFL either right now. It's such a new league. I just don't have those, those type of resources. But, um, so I'm pretty much just going to be giving my thoughts like this as of right now. But, uh, yeah, like I said, overall, it's a pretty positive experience. I got I got a couple flaws with the way things kind of went, but um, most of them are pretty minor and can be tweaked, I think. The uh, But I'm going to start off with the good first. First of all, the actual play on the field, pretty good. Um, I think the LA Wildcats and the Tampa Bay Vipers kind of disappointed me little bit, especially the Wildcats, just because of their management skills, it, it's pretty bad. But um, that'll probably improve. I mean, but overall, like players like uh, PJ Walker played really well. Cardell Jones stood out, um, and Jordan Tayamu for St. Louis, they all played very well. Um, I wasn't super high on Cardell Jones because I haven't seen him play in so long, but he played pretty well week one. And I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, the first game between uh, Seattle and um, D.C., that was really exciting. A lot, a lot of uh, really big plays. Um, I will say, I think the Saturday games were better. But the Sunday games were fine. They were very competent football games, too. Um, it feels a little bit more professional than the AAF did. As far as the... Broadcasting goes, like I said, I want to stick with the positives because I do have some negatives with the broadcasting that I'll get to. Uh, I really, really like, this is something that the AAF did as well. Miking up the referees is a fantastic idea. This way, we know that they're not doing any bullshit. It's very transparent. If they are trying to hide things, they're not going to be able to because we can hear what they're saying. So, I really, really like that. Um, let's see. The commentators were so-so. Some of them were good. Some of them were kind of crap. But uh, that's to be expected. Like I said, it's week one. It's And it's week one for them as well. So, um, the commentators are probably doing the best they can. They probably don't know a lot of these players, to be honest. but Or had to learn their names pretty quickly. Um, so, to kind of... Get into some of the flaws. Uh, I'm going to get into the one that's not so bad first. Because I think it's a pretty easy tweak. The rule that there's someone on the field able to in interview players directly after a play happens. I think they kind of need to tweak that a little bit. Um, I just think that after a player messes up, it just immediately shoving a microphone in their face, that's going to end up with some bad results eventually. Uh, I, I, th I think they should wait at least a couple of plays. Let them, let them catch their breath. Let them get some water. Let them get to the sideline. Do something. Don't just shove a mic in their face right away. Um, and if you are going to do that, don't get mad when stuff like Seattle happens after they just got in a fight and you shove a microphone down their throat and... You know, <laughs> and the the lineman pretty much said, I'm just trying to do my fucking job. And then they bleeped it after that, but it was too late. Um, don't get mad at that. I mean, he his team literally just got in a fight and you're shoving a microphone in his face. What do you expect to happen? Uh, I, I think you got lucky that he didn't just like push the microphone out of his face. So, yeah. But I just think that that can be tweaked pretty easily. Uh, I don't think that has to be removed completely. I actually really like it. Uh, I think Pat McAfee's pretty good at it too. Um, it's just it needs to be tweaked a little bit. I think it needs to be like after a couple plays, like because I can only imagine. Imagine like you you 
you're a defensive player and you pick off the offense from your own goal line and run it 99 yards all the way back. And the second you do there, you're huffing and puffing. You need oxygen, and they're shoving a microphone in your face when you really can't even talk right now. Um, not a good move. It, it's it kind of goes right along with UFC or boxing when they shove a microphone in your face right after you just got knocked out. Like you're not in your presence of mind to be giving an interview right then. It, it, it's something I, I'm not a fan of in the UFC either. Um, but anyway, I don't want to go into that tangent. Um, but the big thing that I think needs to be outright removed is miking up the play callers, um, whether that be the head coach, a coordinator, whatever, whoever the play caller is, don't mic them up. That's stupid because eventually, uh, these teams are going to be able to watch the film and watch the broadcast and know what you're calling. And then it's just as easy as having someone in your team watching the television live and knowing what you're going to do before you do it. Like that's not, that's not what you want. Um, that I think really needs to be taken away completely. Now, if you want to mic up some coaches that aren't play callers, that's fine. If you just want to see what they're saying on the sideline, that's totally okay with me. Like if you're a head coach, that doesn't call plays, you can be mic'd up all you want. But the coordinator should not be. But if you are a head coach that does call plays, you shouldn't be mic'd up. It's just that simple. Uh, I, I just think that's a very stupid thing to do. But, um, yeah. Anyway, overall, like I said, I think it was a pretty positive experience. I think th this first week went pretty well. Uh, all the major things went well. The actual football side of things, I think it was... I mean, you could tell it wasn't the NFL, of course. A lot of these players haven't played in years. You know, you could tell that. But it was entertaining to watch. Uh, it was very well paced. Also, one other thing, too. Uh, I love the kickoff rule. I, I wanted to wait and see it in action, and I love it. Um, being five yards off, that makes sure you don't have to eliminate the, um, the kickoff completely. But it limits... Injury and actually increases the actual skill you need because it focuses more on blocking rather than just colliding. Um, so I'm a, I'm a big fan of that. Uh, the point after a touchdown roll, the PAT, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of cool for strategy, you know, whether you go for one, two, or three. And it is kind of cool that a nine-point lead is still only a one-possession game in the XFL. So that's kind of interesting, but I don't know. I, th I think they're trying to eliminate kickers and punters as much as possible, and I think that that's kind of a it's an important part of football. It it's kind of like in California. It's happening now where a lot of high schools don't even have kickers or punters on the roster, and I think that's stupid. But again, I don't want to go into I don't want to go into that tangent. So, um, but yeah. Anyway, I think that's gonna be it for this video. If you liked it, I'd appreciate you hitting that like button. If you have any questions or comments, leave in the comments down below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.